thank you to attend this uh, session. So we will speak about uh, real-time traffic uh, information. And uh, to, uh, to uh, begin that, we will, uh, I will manage a presentation of uh, what is road situation and road uh, traffic data in, uh, in the data model. So I will use uh, some slides extract from the UML model in order to give you a landscape of what is included in the Datex2 model for situation publication and for traffic publication. Uh, then we will have a presentation from uh, Greece uh, how they use this data uh, for um, uh, the management of uh, the uh, motorway network. Uh, then we will have a presentation from Mr. Stefan Kasha uh, presenting what is done for a local uh, and a small local authority in France with a cross-border exchange with Italy. Uh, and then we will have uh, Pedro uh, speaking on uh, RTTI crucial data and uh, giving some example from uh, Portugal. So I go on. When we want to uh, give information to a end user, and I take this picture I done for the first Datex2 forum in 2010 in Berlin. I can use, like in a book or in a tale, uh, some words to describe an event. And uh, so, uh, with emphasis, I give uh, at the break of dawn on a beautiful winter morning, first day of, uh, of the advent, uh, while lay Langerus, the morning mist. So I can continue like that to describe it was an accident. And uh, with that text too, to ensure that all people can understand, I must use very simple, concise words. Not on phases, but precise. Accident with three dead persons, including one VIP on the 29th of November 2009 uh, at seven in the morning. And weather related, it was fog. It was a run at a place where with the road, road works, and the uh, Sunday was accepted, and uh, road management, fast lane, and art shoulder closed in the north pond. So I can give the same information in a way that it will be easy for the people to understand. And that is a object of that X2. How to ensure, without emphasis, to give the precise information. And because we want to say a lot of things, we have a huge model. But is just because uh, safety relative information and real-time traffic information is a large domain, then we have a more complex uh, model. So, the historic, as it was said by Bart this morning, that X2 was invented, if I can say, for, from road operator to speak with road operator. But the objective is also to speak to the end user, to the driver. And in between, because they are using technical words, we have some journalists which are interesting in, and they are able to speak a simple language, language for the driver, but also able to understand what the road operator says. And because they are not technical operator of road and of traffic, they do not use that text too, but they have some other languages like TPEG. And because at the time, to transmit this information over uh, the radio with FM. They use also TMC, Traffic Message Channel, which is a very low bandwidth 
So you cannot also say a lot. And you have that, but at the end, from the equipment you have on board, sorry, it's the red, yes. You have the navigation system, which appears. And this navigation system, with a SIM card inside, are able to give some information back. And we have the beginning of the floating car data and cellular data. So this information are coming back to service operator to increase the quality, quality of the message are transmitting to the driver. And for those who have, for, for, uh, for, for you, perhaps you have perhaps uh, yesterday have the visit, the technical visit in the tunnel of, um, of A86. They are using the traffic announcement inside the tunnel. They have the FM. Because when a fire happens in the tunnel, they are able to cut all FM emission to speak directly to the driver. If they are before the fire, you stop now. If they are after the, uh, the, the fire, they are asked to speed up to go out of the tunnel. And so that is something which was already begin, uh, it, the, the deployment began end of 90s using the TMC with LRC location. And I remember that uh, you uh, were working uh, on, on TMC. So that is a feedback. But after that, we have on smartphone the capability also to transmit other information directly from the driver. And that is interesting also for a road operator. How to manage that and to be sure that we understand each other. You remember this uh, image? At the beginning, traffic control center deployed some loops in order to have a better knowledge of the traffic. In the 70s in France, we began to install loops, but at certain place, to ensure the transmission in real time of the result of the loop, someone was sent during the peak of traffic in summertime to collect the data and to pick up a phone and to call the traffic control center to transmit the data and to say, oh, we have this level. And the traffic control center say, oh, now we have to activate uh, rerouting. So the guy who was on the field go and change the signs because it was not managed electronically. Now we can. And to better manage that, we decide to deploy VMS along to speak to the vehicle, to the driver. With the VMS, you have the guarantee that 100% driver are able to see the message and to read it. That is not always the case with other way of transmission of data, of information. In between, service operators say, oh, we are interested with this information. Can we keep? And they deployed contact with traffic control centers. And that is, they said, oh, can we catch? Because each traffic control center has developed its own system, service operator needs to speak several languages to be able to understand. And that was a mess. But before finding the solution, they began to deploy services. And they have service dispatch point, so through TMC, through uh, digital radio, or something like that. And we come also with CCTV. We know better the traffic because at certain place, we are able to, to see the congestion beginning, the end of queue, and so on. But due to the fact that all people speak not the same language, it was decided to have an app, National Access Point. And some countries began before the European Commission 
And uh, from uh, 2004 to 2009, I was, re I was responsible of the uh, database, which is uh, behind the Bison Futé system in France, which provides info real-time information on a map, but also to a service operator. And because the service operator are collecting information from others, it will, uh, we, uh, we see appearing, appearing contained operator and more and more contained operator. And then, because the vehicle began to, to speak, <laughs> if I can say, with the navigation system, all the system will be reorganized. I let the uh, <coughs> orange point with blue because VMS, loop, and CCTV is not always using, uh, are mainly using proprietary uh, language to communicate with the traffic control center. But with that, and you remember the slide, we have the world, which is now divided in three parts for oper traffic uh, management, for road operation, it's that takes two, for transmission, it could be TPEG. And now with the cooperative ITS, we have CITS and we see appearing the ITS station, road station, and the ITS vehicle equipment. So it's just to, to give the figure and to remind what we already hear today, but uh, I think it's Good to understand. Traffic situation and traffic data. Traffic situation is linked with an event. And we have two kinds of events, unpredictable events that is not planned and that impact the traffic. We have managed event and that is planned, roadworks mainly, and the impact on the traffic is organized, if I can say, because if I close the road or close the lane, I can manage that for a safe way for the driver or to give a rerouting solution. That is not the case when a route blockage arrives due to an accident. The first phase is an impact but it's not a road closed. After that, because I am managing the traffic, I close the road because I have organized a rerouting and I give information about rerouting. And that is traffic management plan. And we speak about that this morning. And we have traffic data linked with the measurement, the loop first, but other system now we have with the CCTV, the automatic incident detection. And so this system are able to transmit vehicle breakdown or vehicle driving in the wrong direction, in the wrong way. That is something which the system are able. And we have elaborated data and both measurement or elaborated data provides traffic data, travel times, traffic status, and they collect also information about weather. So that is the reason to, to have that. The publication can be a situation publication or measured data publication or elaborated data publication. I will not speak about VMS. It's not the objective of today. For traffic situation, we have situation and situation record. If I can compare, the situation is a group of situation record. So it's like a family name. Inside you have members and the first member creates the, fam the, the name of the family, if I can say. And if relative event are uh, linked with the first one, you put that in one situation because they are interacting together. And therefore, 
you have the situation, sorry, which is identifiable, né? the name of the family, and you have the situation record, which is not only identifiable, but also versionable, because each event can evolve. And it's not because I am aging every year that the family name is impacted. It's just me. I am aging. It's so. <laughs> and that is what I want to, to give you as figure. Situation. Inside you find situation record. And situation record contained information like the uh, creation start time, which is mandatory because an event began one at a time, uh, that, that time. And we have also the version time, because each time you uh, change something or you add some information, you have a, a change of the version. And that is very important also for people who are uh, operating services. They can know that the last version they receive is up to date with this date. So then in the situation rec rec um, record, I will mainly look at the two kinds of events, the unpredictable traffic element or the predictable one, ac operator action. So traffic e element is abnormal traffic, accident, condition, so that is condition of road, driving on the road and so on, obstruction, activity. And we have also managed event, network management, roadworks. Uh, I just say abnormal traffic could be uh, different. What is an event in Paris? Having no abnormal traffic in the morning at peak hour. <laughs> but some are predictable, but it's better to, 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 to look at. It's just to smile. So after that, on network management, you can, and that is linked with the UVA, but uh, that, that is rerouting management and so on. I will not go in, uh, but you can also point out vehicle characteristic, which vehicle is concerned and so on. You have, so general management, Instruction to the driver, keep your, your lane or something like that. Use the arch shoulder because it's open. Speed management, road or, car uh, or carriageway or lane management with the road closure or narrow lane and so on. And we have roadworks with maintenance uh, construction works and maintenance work. And you have some moving, and it depends also on the maintenance vehicle. If you are grass cutting, it's something which is in interesting to, to say because it's moving and the behavior of the driver is not the same. So you announce something between this time and this time and between this location and this location, you will have grass cutting, so be careful. I managed in the past 500 kilometers of roads, and it was at certain parts very narrow roads in a county. Uh, and for me, grass cutting was a stressful uh, maintenance work because sometimes the road was so narrow that the vehicle to cut the grass must go uh, beyond the middle of the road. And due to the fact that it's, it was with a, a curve, I was always fearing that an accident happened with the vehicle coming and not knowing that the, uh, the, the grass cutting was on. And that is something which is interesting. Oh, what happened? So general class. We have some general class for the situation. And we can relate situation uh, among them. We can also give some information with confidentiality and what is the mandatory or not mandatory way to uh, broadcast or to disclose this information. And 
in your tunnel, by example, they, they use that to make the traffic announcement very efficient. So we have, when you have a situation record, we ha you have a location reference, and you can put comment. And comment can be useful for uh, the log uh, in the traffic control center. But also sometimes they, are, they can be private or they can be pu public. And if they are public, it can go to the end user and the service operator can use it to give a better uh, vision of traffic. Oh, sorry. So we have the impact on the road, and that is different that uh, the, uh, the manage caused. You have impact because uh, an accident happened and part of the road is blocked. You have the source, and source is very interesting because with the source, you can know if you can trust it or not. If it's just, just a call from a, a smartphone, you have less confidence that if it's a patrol who said, I see a brake down vehicle uh, on the road. So that is, you have the validity period and you can have also additional calls which are outside your system. Location, so I will not go deep inside, but uh, with location referencing, you have the capability to give itineraries. That is very interesting for rerouting. But you can also give some location. And by, by example, you can have location by reference to give, um, to avoid to give all the details each time. And that is uh, the table reference, site table for measurement by example, because the loop are not moving. So it's interesting to say, I will not describe all the location of the loop each time I give the figures collect by this, uh, this loop, but I give just a reference and then you can find where is it. You have a destination, but you have also point, location, and that is what we have there. Point location, where you have supplementary position if you want to, to be very precise with our shoulder, uh, first lane, second lane, uh, and so on. You have so point location, you have linear location, and with the location, you have so several ways. You have coordinates, you have point along a linear element, and that was in the past mar marker post, uh, the kilometer point. But uh, you have TPEC point location, you have Alertsi, and that is very useful because um, it's uh, very easy to be uh, uh, independent of map and uh, to, to manage TMC services or to, uh, to have a text to speech. That was very interesting to, uh, because we developed that in France and the cost to develop text to speech from that X2 was, so we spent 8,000 euros. Uh, it was for the easy way uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Portugal, Pedro. Uh, so it was in 2011 uh, or? Uh, 11 or 12, yeah. Or 12, yes. So for 8,000 euros, we were able to develop to extract, to, to, to make wave message uh, and to put that on the server for people who want to, to have, uh, to, to be able to hear the information we produce in that text too. So we have also open LR. I will, so that is for linear, open LR and uh, G, uh, G, uh, GML, that is for make the link with a, a geographic uh, system. Measure data, and I will just show you, measure data class is quite the same that elaborated data, if you look at. And the difference is due to the fact that measure data, you have measurement site reference. 
because you do not give the uh, location every time, but you give the reference to the time to the table, referencing table. In elaborated data, you give also pre uh, predefined location, but with a traffic status default, you are able to give the traffic status uh, default. Because when you give traffic status or travel time, it's good to have a reference. So I will go quick. You have the physical quantity. You have the basic data. In basic data, you have weather, traffic data, traffic status, travel time data. And in uh, traffic data, you have traffic gap, traffic headway, traffic concentration, traffic speed, traffic flow. And that is very important because traffic uh, tra travel time is not enough to manage traffic. You need the traffic flow. You need the traffic gap to know the concentration of the traffic and to know if you are near the level of saturation of the network you are managing. And that is something some people miss. They give travel time without knowing that perhaps this stretch is very near to be congestioned. And if you, try, you, you ask to the uh, driver to go there because it's faster, 50 vehicles more, and you block total, totally the traffic. And so bus are very important. So vehicle characteristic, you have the capability to have the weight. You have the capability to have the weight on axle. And that is also something important, especially for road maintenance, by example. You have the traffic status and you have travel time. And travel time, you can give the free flow travel time, normal expecting time, free flow, flow speed, and so on. So weather data, it's very complete with wind, temperature, road, road surface condition. I will give this figure. Road surface, you have the temperature below or above the road surface. And that is very important in winter condition. You, you know if you are very near to have black ice with this kind of information. So you have the de-icing concentration, de-icing application rate that is useful when you are sorting uh, and you know uh, how, how many time you have to, uh, to come back on a, in which time you, you have to come back to, uh, to manage that, the level of friction of your road with the wind, with the temperature, so air, dew, dew point temperature, at which height you measure the, the, the wind speed because you have the global, global wind, uh, but you have also the, the speed at the level of the road, which can be very different and which has a big impact on the truck, by example. So that was my presentation to give you the whole landscape. But what you have to not forget is it's huge, perhaps, but we don't need to have all. And that is a reason to have profile in that text too. And with profile, you can extract what you want to produce what is needed. And so in this case, you can have just a small part of the model and very easy to implement. I will give you the floor now. So, Tanasis, thank, thank you. you to present uh, the work of uh, Luis Ignacia. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tanasis Iatropoulos and I'm representing Egnatia Odos. Uh, Egnatia is uh, a toll operator and uh, we are a publicly owned company. Um, I am going to talk to you about an implementation that uh, was uh, done um, uh, with the participants Egnatia and Link Technologies, which is a ITS uh, integrator and software development company. A uh, few words about the Egnatia motorway. It spans the northern part of Greece 
Uh, and uh, together with the vertical axis, uh, this is a road network of around close to 1,000 kilometers at the moment. Um, this project is about uh, implementing a system that will gather information from um, five regional traffic control centers that we have. And uh, uh, this was part of uh, an upgrade of, uh, of, of the software in the, in the traffic control uh, centers. Uh, we also developed a central point that we call the Ignatia Single Access Point uh, to resemble the National Access Point. And um, from that single access point, then we sent uh, data using the Datex format to the National Access Point of Greece. And uh, all this was done according to um, the delegated regulations 886 and uh, 962. Uh, to give you an overview of what um, uh, we did is that we, we collected, info and we're still collecting information from weather stations. Uh, from cameras that are spread around the motorway. Uh, from uh, the traffic control centers, we gather traffic data, and, uh, and this data is, comes also from uh, the traffic, man traffic management system and the SCADA system. And also uh, data from uh, the, vari the vari variable message uh, signs. Uh, there is a central point uh, an infrastructure that uh, uh, contains hardware and uh, a database that is, is, is uh, marked in blue there. And this is the, uh, the, the, the single access point of Egnatia. And then with uh, Datex2 messages, uh, information is transferred to the national access point. So, um, what we, um, in fact, uh, did is we uh, created um, different sets of, uh, of flows. The, uh, yeah, and, and I'm going to, to give you just an overview of, uh, of the content of uh, the system. So we selected the elaborated data publication and uh, the predefined location application uh, with uh, information about traffic flows and uh, loops and VCA data. Then we also selected the measurement data publication and measurement site table publication to gather weather condition data. And uh, then we collected information from the VMS uh, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, what, it, what is worth mentioning here is that each subsystem has a different set of sensors, data, events that, are, that these are being published uh, on the single access point. And in order for the single access point to be able to handle uh, this data uh, variety, the system is able to automatically readjust its Datex publication schemas in real time. That is the most uh, important uh, aspect of uh, the system and uh, as a result there is one single algorithm uh, per publication that handles all of the SASP system and dynamic, dynamically alters the schema. So uh, this accordingly adjusts the published data. The, the characteristics or rather the benefits of uh, the implementation R3. This is a structure-driven and not a data-driven, and I will explain to you in a moment, uh, system and architecture. Uh, it is highly parameterized and it is modular. These were the demands that we placed uh, when designing the system. So um, when we say it's structure-driven, I'll give you an example. The actual structure of the origin, of the origin data underlying in the origin locations, which are the traffic management system, uh, the weather stations, and the VMS, it's being imported and uh, directly impacts the structure of the single access point in the back end with uh, the blue color as, uh, as you saw before. Uh, so, for example, if we take 
the series road, sector, lane in a SCADA system. And uh, this will lead to specific data architecture in the single access point. Um, this can be considered as a set of, guideline, of guidelines, like a set of rules that must be met. And um, these, on, on, on the transformed data that uh, reside in the single access point, um, this data uh, is not, uh, is, is not uh, transferred in a way uh, that, uh, that, that is bound to, to the uh, architecture of uh, the database in the single access point, but uh, it is, it is uh, disengaged in order to be independent. Uh, when we say high, highly parameterized, we mean that uh, a separate layer of labels, descriptions and uh, data fields has been created and placed over the data structure described in uh, the previous point. So uh, even though origin data structure uh, uh, will lead to a defined uh, single access point data structure, uh, there is an extra layer that can be highly parameterized, and I'll explain to you in a moment, uh, no matter what the underlying uh, structure of the data is. And when we talk about modular components, um, this means that the end user, which is uh, the toll operator in the moment, Egnatia, uh, has the ability to alter the published data in real time, either by filtering the, designed, the desired entities to be published, or by filtering the parameterized entities. Practically, it's like a switch that we switch on and off uh, label publications and uh, now entering uh, the first uh, key point, which is the structure-driven architecture. As mentioned above, the data are being mapped to a tree structure that is inherited by the origin structure. So we see that uh, a tree structure, for example, it's uh, like um, road, section lane, this is a tree structure. And uh, if we want to uh, manipulate the data, we don't manipulate the data itself, but we refer to the, this tree structure. And this creates uh, a structure that is independent of the data. So the key benefits of this technique is flexibility, updatability, and uh, it's, it's a, let's say, um, a system-wide rule. Uh, so, as an example, if we have a lane that resides in a section and this in turn resides in a road entity, these are the three components that uh, uh, are being handled by this uh, system without the data, without the need to be, uh, to, to alter the data. Uh, then we say, we have highly parameterized the entities. This means that uh, the, the user of, uh, of this system, which is uh, the toll operator at the moment, is able to play, let's say, with the namings, the locations, uh, the weather stations, and uh, the mapping between the vehicle types that are in the system and the Datex 2, for example, uh, vehicle types, uh, without uh, the need to uh, go directly to uh, to the data to make changes. So um, the event characteristics, as you see, uh, type, location, and lanes are handled in a way that uh, uh, that the user has full uh, responsibility because there is an intermediate layer that uh, uh, it's like like the user interface. And uh, then the third key point about the, talking about the modular components. Uh, this means that um, um, the end user can decide to turn on or off, like a switch, the entire Datex publications. Or alternatively, the end user can choose to turn on or off the switch of specific labels of the transformation layer, filtering specific sections, roads, 
lanes, entire weather stations, or specific metrics. This ultimately gives complete control of the single access point to the end user. So uh, the system itself can scale dynamically. That's why we talk about uh, scalability. Uh, based on the data that is input, and as long as this data complies with the guidelines and rules uh, set, um, it gets, for example, it gets added, deleted, or changed, and this change is transferred to the network as long as the agreed criteria are met. And all of the above can be managed directly from the front-end application with absolutely no changes in the database or any other uh, back-end uh, element. So basically what uh, I have described to you is uh, an implementation that is using uh, the data standard to transfer data from uh, a location that is um, um, uh, one point uh, in one uh, toll operator in order for this data to be transferred to the uh, national access point in Greece. So, uh, thank you for your attention. Um, now I let the floor to uh, Stefan. I'm just looking. Yes, this one. Okay. And that was uh, that will be uh, on how they use that text to for local authorities. Yes. Hi. Um, so I will show you uh, an implementation of that uh, based on DATEX2 uh, used for uh, small roads, not motorized. Uh, so this implementation is called Traffix. Uh, it's a traffic management system with many functionalities. Um, and it has been based on DATEX2 uh, Okay, it has been based on DATEX2 for different reasons. The first reason, in fact, it was back in 2007, was not really exchange. It's just, it was just to have a model for the traffic information that was stable, that was covering all the cases. Uh, and the third reason was to exchange data with other operators. But the main reason was not to try to uh, create something new uh, to describe what's happening on the road. The text to people had already done that. And uh, the last reason was that it was easy to expand. But from a small world operator, easy to expand means that uh, we will just start with a very small subset of that text tool, for example, just road closure, and then we will just enable new functionality. So uh, it was a guarantee for them that they will be able to describe everything, but at the beginning, they, very, they were using very simple and uh, easy uh, DATEX2 version. So in France, we've got different level of roads. Uh, we've got the motorways, 12,000 kilometers. Uh, we've got national roads, 8,000 kilometers. They will disappear soon. Uh, we've got department, department roads, so the small road, it's about, it's above 3,100 uh, kilometers, 300,000 kilometers, uh, and this is this type of road we are targeting. And we need to have this exchange between all the operators of these roads, so the motorways, the neighbors, and uh, for some of our customers, the neighbors are also in other country, Italy, for example. So the first source for that text information we had to take into account was uh, exchanging data with other operator. Another source for uh, that text information are the sensors, so you already talked about that. Uh, we collect data from traffic uh, measurement station, from weather station, and from other equipments too, like tunnels that can be closed automatically. And uh, we have a system based on rule to produce that text situation automatically. Uh, depending on the, um, the organization, these this situations are either directly published if they do not have a central uh, control center, or they can be just validated by an operator. And once uh, the situation is published, there is no difference between a situation 
made from a sensor and a situation made by an operator. That's useful if uh, you have a sensor that is down, you can just input a situation and it will have the same effect that uh, the automatic one. So sensors, we collect data. From this data, we've got this set of rules and the rules will uh, make the situation. So the sensor we have, I uh, already told about that, the metering station, the weather station, cameras, tuners, etc. And each of them are, doing, are um, specific to a type, a, a situation type. Uh, next part is uh, inputting situations from uh, the trucks and the patrols. So they are using either a mobile application or they can use uh, sensors fixed on the trucks. Uh, this can be used for uh, intervention vehicle, for emergency vehicle. Uh, this can be used for winter maintenance vehicles, so snow plow or uh, salter, and uh, for roadside moving. In that case, we are producing a mobile situation, so mobile road work situation or mobile um, maintenance work. And we um, yes, and it's moving along the sky. So another way of using that, uh, um, we can use that also for a um, planned situation. Usually when you plan a road work, uh, the, the scheduling is larger, is longer than what you need, just in case of bad weather, for example. And uh, one of the customers is using a double input, one input from the planning software, so we can announce that there will be a road work at this place, and then an input from its um, mobile application uh, that will really start the situation. And uh, on their website, they added this small uh, red or black or green dot that says this situation is planned, but not yet started, or uh, shows that the situation is active. So same thing for uh, this type of device. Um, they built some signs, so the basic signs with flashlights, and in fact, it just, uh, we just added some electronics in it. When you switch on the lights, automatically the position, the location of the sign is transmitted, uh, plus the orientation, and it generates automatically a data situation. So one sign, one type of situation record, one type of situation. And we are sure that uh, the situation is real because the sign is really on the side of the road. Same type of device on moving the uh, moving vehicles. Uh, so we can, uh, for the mowing you, you talk about, uh, say that uh, there is not a road work in this area, but there is a road work exactly at this place. And we update that every minute. And every time uh, we generate that tech situation. Uh, last usage uh, is from moving car data. So what we are doing, we are taking information travel time uh, from a partner, which is Waze. Uh, and we are using also a metering station because uh, there is small defect in Waze when there is very few vehicles, the time might not be correct. So we just mix these two information to generate uh, congestion information. So that's all the sources we have. Uh, this morning, Bat was talking about plug and socket. So that's all the plug we have. And now we'll show you uh, the socket where we send the situation to. So first thing, uh, for many of these sockets, we will need to talk to human. So uh, we've got a module that translates that text to into is something which is human readable. Uh, in fact, we have got three channels, one which is uh, targeting mail or text-based, so for report, uh, which converts a that text to situation into a title and a content. Another one uh, produces phonetic text. So same thing as you did probably, uh, and it's mainly used for the interactive voice server. And the last one uh, produce short text. That's for notification or Twitter. 
So first output, it's the website uh, or the mobile application. So we use the translation into human text to make the bubble, and then we put the every event on a map. One interesting thing, um, because we had this problem at first, um, they had a map like that, but they, also, they had also an um, interactive voice server, and they must update each of these channels one by one. By using that text 2 as our central node, uh, all the information are coherent. So what you can see on the map is exactly the same thing you will have on the other channel. Another output uh, is targeting the media and uh, the internal management. So that's SMS plus reports. Uh, for the public, we have mobile notification and we have email. So people can just uh, register themselves on an area or on a journey. And uh, this type of information is pushed based on the uh, overall impact, which is a data field. Uh, and because this uh, field is important uh, for us, uh, we automated uh, the, um, the value of this field based on the road uh, category and the situation nature. Again, it's a small rule based system, so the user can uh, change it if necessary. Now for the internal management, an example of a report that is sent uh, daily or weekly with the, all the information. Uh, the interactive voice server, um, well, it's an old way to talk to world users, uh, but uh, in fact, it's still widely used. And uh, during the, the critical period, uh, at the beginning of the, um, of the holidays, uh, we can have hundreds of calls on this uh, number. And uh, finally, we've got uh, action on the road itself. So it can be VMS messages, uh, it can be traffic light settings or gate closure. So some concrete examples. Uh, so this example is in the Alps. Uh, we've got a traffic light on a small road, uh, but uh, this road is really uh, heavily used during the summer holidays, and we can have um, traffic jams of uh, 3 to 10 kilometers. And the idea is just to detect the traffic jam. So here it's detected uh, by the Waze plus tra um, traffic measurement station we talked about before. And when we detect the traffic jam, we signal it on the website, okay? But we also change the traffic light settings in order to have more green time on the congested uh, axis. Another uh, congestion detection, so same kind of detection. And uh, the goal here is just to uh, redirect, reroute the traffic uh, when you've got the jam in the, on the red line. The red line, in fact, is a valley, so you don't have any way to get out of this valley once you're in it. And uh, when the jam is detected, so about 10 kilometers before, we are rerouting the people. And this is done automatically again by detection, that takes two situation, and then uh, modification on the, the VMS, message on the VMS. Uh, another example, um, again in the Alps, near the Italy border, uh, the three roads you see here are three roads that uh, can, uh, that you can use to go from uh, Briançon and Serre-Chevalier, which are ski resorts, to Grenoble. Uh, what you can see on the map is that there is no other roads than these three roads. The shorter one uh, is closed about uh, five to 10 days in the winter because of snow. So regularly, we, this one is closed. So again, we detect the closure and we put messages on the signs. And this is uh, completely local because it is world is managed by uh, the department. But what can happen is that the other road, the, the top one is closed. And this one is not managed by the department. It managed uh, for the first part by uh, the DIR, so the national roads, and the second part by Italy, and the third part by a motorway. 
So we need to use the DATEX2 situation from uh, the operator plus the DATEX2 situation we import to decide which routing will be enabled and to put that on the variable message sign. One important thing is that uh, all these roads are managed by the, an operator which has uh, limited um, uh, capabilities. So there is no one uh, keeping an eye on the road during the night. So it's completely automatic. And once the, um, the automatic system is triggered, uh, we alert someone. But it's only after the system has been triggered that we alert um, uh, the, the manager. So that's a full picture with all the inputs and the outputs of this system. And um, well, it's really based on that text too. Uh, and it's modular because uh, some of our customers are only using some of the inputs and inputs and not all of the system. So you know already uh, Pedro, thank you, and uh, you will present us part of Portugal and RTTI crucial data. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Pedro Barradas. I work uh, for this uh, company called Armies ITS. Um, Armies is a, a company that is um, doing ITS for quite some time. Um, basically, uh, developing, um, uh, I don't think that's the one, developing traffic management services for the road operations in Portugal. We operate for um, um, the National uh, Road Authority 24-7, uh, but also for uh, some um, private concessionaries there. Um, and we, we run more or less seven uh, traffic control centers in Portugal. That's uh, we, we try to be as agnostic uh, as possible towards technology, uh, but we keep uh, we keep being faithful to standards. And uh, Datex is, uh, of course, one of the the ones that Armies has been following for many many years. What I'm trying to to bring um, and share with you, yeah, thank you, uh, is the results of a pilot project that uh, we ran in in Porto, and um, it's linking with real-time traffic information but it's a combination of very different technologies and um, it can show how a little bit of creativity and uh, and a little bit of imagination can put forward some uh, uh, different uh, uh, services and i'll try to put this in the context of uh, using datex and uh, real-time traffic information because it, it's the basis for the services that we we want to to envision so this is a, a, a urban um, pilot project uh, that we have set, established in the, the region of uh, the city of Porto. And that's actually where Armies has their uh, main offices. What we uh, have tried to, to establish is a, a combination of exchange uh, data in between different traffic control centers, but not, ne not necessarily road operation traffic control centers. So it's a combination of uh, a public uh, transport control center and the city um, uh, traffic control center uh, and we are exchanging data uh, in between these two um, to kind of promote public transport use uh, in the city in some uh, some corridors uh, so of course one of the the best aspects of, of Datex is exactly the, the facilitating exchanging between traffic control centers and Porto has this a uh, singular situation where you have, from traffic uh, management point of view, three different jurisdictions in the same area. You have the city with their own traffic control center and uh, the, the emergency response services, the, the, the police and the enforcement bodies, um, which is uh, operating in the, in, the, in the city. But then you have the national authority, uh, road authority, that runs partially some of the motorways around uh, the ring road uh, uh, and to the north and to the south of Porto. And you have a private concession there also, um, operating partly uh, of the motorway of the motorways um, around Porto. So I'll, I'll show you this in a, in a bit, but just to give you a context that we're actually combining four 
uh, traffic control centers. So one private, one public, uh, national wide, one local from the city and another one from a public authority. Our intention here was to use artificial inten intelligence and machine uh, learning techniques to kind of create a simulation uh, module from the, the network in the city of Porto. And then based on those simulations, try to generate uh, different um, uh, traffic management plans for uh, unplanned or planned events. But we focused ba basically on, on planned events like uh, roadworks or uh, sports events that we know are going to have an impact on, on traffic. And we want to use um, those uh, circulation plans and the forecasting and the simulation tools also to provide innovative services to the end users on the road. So what we came up with the idea to install VMSs in the back end of some buses and have them running around in the, in the city like mobile VMSs, providing information, real-time traffic information, both for navigation to the cars coming behind, um, providing them options on one of the bridges at certain, certain uh, uh, hours of the day, especially the peak hours. Um, and we would use these to, to provide them information also on uh, uh, accidents or restrictions, uh, uh, real-time events based on the routings of, uh, of those, uh, those vehicles. Also, we wanted to, co to have a combination of CITS-equipped vehicles, um, uh, so we installed some uh, uh, roadside units and onboard units connected to the traffic lights, and we've came up with uh, prioritizing public transport with GLOSA um, using CITS-equipped um, um, traffic lights. And we would uh, use the simulation and the prediction tools also to, um, to promote this, uh, the speed-up of uh, the exploration um, uh, of the, the, those routings for the public transport. So I think I can skip uh, this, but uh, it's important to say that we had some uh, really interesting partners. So the ones, this is the Infrastructure Portugal is actually the, the national road operator. Then uh, the University of Porto really helped us with the algorithms and the artificial intelligence and all of the, the nerdy techie things. STCP is the, the public transport operator uh, there in, in, uh, in, uh, in Porto. And, and this is uh, Porto's city hall. Uh, I am, yeah, great. Uh, there's a small video um, in loop, uh, kind of a, a GIF um, re recurring, uh, showing up uh, how we are uh, doing this. So we've created the digital model of the city of Porto. Uh, we've integrated data from, of course, the sensors, the loops that are there um, equipped in, the, uh, in, the, in combination with the traffic lights. Um, we were monitoring the, the status of, um, of the network and we were exploring this data. So we were creating historical data. We have now more than five years of historical data uh, to put in place, which is the basis for the simulations and the forecastings that we've uh, been doing. And of course, we wanted to use AI uh, and um, machine learning techniques to have uh, a propagation of um, uh, levels of services in the roads where we have no data coming from. And uh, we would do this um, in combination with, uh, with different sources of, um, of data. Uh, we would try to calibrate and validate the, um, the inputs of, uh, of the data by using uh, data fusion techniques and came up with the digital twin uh, of the data uh, of the, the network um, that you see there represented in different categories. So in green, you can see that these are the main uh, motorways operated, as I said, both by Infrastructures Portugal, which are here and here, but also in Ascendi, which is a, a private, own, privately owned concession here, and then further up, another one here. So this is, would be a combination of different exchange of data in between these uh, different traffic control centers and road operators. Uh, it took us a while to calibrate the whole module, uh, the whole, um, uh, yes, uh, module, uh, mod, the whole model, sorry, um, for the road network. Uh, it was uh, painful and, um, and uh, frustrating sometimes. It took us a while to uh, uh, get all the, the right turns and all the, the lanes uh, well signaled according to what was there in the terrain, but eventually we pulled it off. And uh, we were able then to uh, start making our predictions and, uh, and forecasting. 
So we, as I as I said, we used um, uh, AI and neural networks to uh, use um, also in combination with the tools of micro simulation. Um, and what you see here, hopefully, these are two lines. Uh, the ones in the middle are uh, representing the the service of level that you have on the current uh, on the present moment, and in the outside you have dashed um, service levels that you can then use your uh, your toggle to move back and forth in period in in intervals of fifteen minutes up to two hours. Of course, uh, the the prediction uh, is further away from in time. They lose quality, so you get uh, lower levels of uh, predictions in two hours. You get some better ones at one hour, and better ones uh, in a quarter of an hour and a half an hour, as uh, as uh, it would be expected. So what we also did was uh, uh, created a module to self-assess how well we were performing in our predictions in those kinds of intervals, and I'll get there in a moment. So. Um, this is the part that was uh, really difficult for us to um, uh, to, to cope with, to uh, uh, have the the digital model in the simulation with uh, with all the the right characterization of uh, the road network. It took us a, a long time to to make these configurations. We took also into account the origin destination matrices matrix, matrices, and um, a lot of work was dedicated to the calibration of the model so that we would get our outputs um, as close as possible to uh, to our intentions. So if we are then having uh, simulation and forecasting tools, we can make predictions. We can make traffic management uh, uh, plans and uh, assess the how well would they perform in a planned situation. So we would uh, simply uh, close some roads uh, in simulation and see the impacts of uh, of that. It's really useful for when you have a, a metro expansion like you do now in, in Porto. Currently, there are nine uh, metro stations ongoing, so you can, in simultaneously, so you can really assess um, the impacts of, uh, of traffic with those uh, um, roadworks. Uh, um, and you can then try to diverge um, um, or make plans to diverge or manage traffic around those areas using these, uh, these tools. Just a few examples of um, the, the kind of simulations that we, we took into account. So actually, this is the, the city hall here, and this is one of the most well-known um, uh, plazas in, in Porto. Uh, it's also in, in the city center, and we would circle this area and make some roadblocks um, digitally and then assess the impacts on, uh, on the model based on, um, on those uh, scenarios. Uh, this is where we self-assess the quality of our um, predictions. So you have here, these are the 15 minutes, uh, and they, they come in green because they are higher quality. These are one hour, and these are up to two hours. And you also have uh, a kind of uh, an intuitive way to uh, self-assess how well you are forecasting uh, um, uh, up to two hours. So it, it's a, a, an algorithm that learns on itself and it's always learning and improving. Uh, and uh, for us, it's a combination of techniques, AI techniques that uh, really come uh, to prove that um, uh, they best fit uh, the needs because if you use AI alone, you will not get any uh, kind of prediction where you are not collecting data. So you have to use a combination of neural networks and, uh, and machine learning techniques to kind of have the full propagation of the traffic across the, the full coverage of the, the network. So then we could start playing around with the, you know, with the, with the buzzes. We did some designs of how we were going to install uh, the VMSs. We chose a, a manufacturer to do so. We installed that uh, in, in the back of the, the vehicle. We had, we had issues with re re retroflecting uh, uh, a window. We had to then use the right um, lightning um, intensity to get the, the messages uh, uh, out to the to the public and you can see here uh, a picture in, during the day where it's working and this is our sponsor the european commission and the project the project c roads here we did some some demos of uh, the things that we, we would 
Um, sorry for being in Portuguese, but uh, I think they're more or less obvious. We would provide information about uh, weather conditions uh, here. We would uh, um, advise for caution on, on, uh, with rain. We would advise on a, a low tra uh, slow traffic or um, in specific areas well known to the locals. Uh, Roadworks or accidents, uh, these are the kind of things that from a crucial point of view, RTTI, we would signal as uh, crucial information to, to the end users. Uh, we tested out this uh, in some sections. I don't know if um, this one is... Uh, no, this, this is not moving. Uh, in some sections to, to prioritize the public bus and get uh, the, the green light wave in, in those sections and also assess the impact of uh, what that would mean to the um, uh, surrounding area. And here are uh, some uh, few pictures of uh, you know, the, the equipment that we've installed in the vehicles to simulate this and acquire the data. So it's a big, let's say, a big salad of uh, um, technology coming together with a little bit of creativity. It's a pilot, so it's not uh, deployed here, but at least it shows uh, you know, the, how, how far can we go even without uh, the CITS equipped vehicles to get the, the, the CITS messages uh, directly in your vehicle. We can use, in the meantime, VMS, to also provide CITS or, or real-time traffic information uh, to the end users with this kind of notion of mobile VMSs running around the city. So this is uh, a little bit crazy, but uh, it was something that uh, we put up in, uh, in Porto and tested out in the past uh, few years. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Pedro. So now we have uh, some time. 30 minutes to, uh, for questions, and after half an hour before the Batex to club. <laughs> uh, so the, it's an honor, uh, the two hours and half for networking, to see also some, uh, some technical present, not presentation, but demonstration. So uh, Stéphane uh, will be able to, uh, to show you how it works with this uh, science uh, which is uh, activated uh, and providing that X2 message uh, so that, that uh, six uh, people or four, uh, five or, or six people will manage some uh, demo. So, now place for question to the presenter. Everyone wants to go for drinks or, <laughs> <laughs> or better working at your long days. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Did you, uh, when you did the presentation on the, uh, uh, oh, I should be okay, uh, on simulating with the road network, uh, simulating, predicting uh, traffic flow and, and all this, did you program it all yourself? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not myself, I'm a few. No, yeah, yeah. I know but nothing about data because I'm no expert uh, on that field. I can uh, provide some ideas on and get these concepts, crazy concepts sometimes, and, and challenge the team to. Uh, to develop the, um, the, the actual work, uh, but I, I didn't code anything. I'm a civil engineer, so uh, yeah, yeah. my background is traffic and, and transport. But the team is a combination of uh, civil engineer and IT people yeah. combined to, to provide ideas services. And, um, and that's how we, we've been doing this for, uh, for a couple of years, many years now. And it, it was no digital road network as a base. You had to register the whole area yes. uh, with all the restrictions and all that. Exactly. And we had, uh, we had to go for field trips many times yeah, yeah. and uh, use Google Maps also to uh, check whether or not uh, you have the, the right uh, traffic play, uh, signs in place and uh, the circulation plans is mm. according to uh, what's actually there uh, yeah, yeah. Um, at the present time. So we, were, we were, would have to, to check it uh, very, very often uh, during the preparation times and, and that was Part of the, the hardship of, of the project was yeah. to have it well calibrated and uh, reflecting the reality. Mm, because it's upstates all the time, yeah, so yeah. you have to keep up, yeah. But but do you get, uh, it's possible to buy uh, like uh, uh, <coughs> solutions for this uh, simulation. Uh, yeah. uh, you can buy finished software for doing some of this, yeah? We use an open source. I, I, I okay. Some to, uh, 
Aimson, yeah? Yes. Hmm. We used that, so we, um, we took that into um, the, um, the digital model, and we went from there. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. And there's a question to the other presenters. But I hear that uh, it's time to network. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I will thank all presenters. Thank you for the presentation you've done. It was very interesting to see how uh, that text two is not only theory, but uh, turned into uh, practice and real operation. And uh, also for cross-border, and that is also something interesting because uh, sometimes I remember the, as I began in ITS in 2004, uh, the first so implementation done was to uh, have a fax in French and in Spanish to exchange <laughs> during the cross-border activation of traffic management plan because uh, people from uh, both sides of the border do not speak the uh, other language. And my so... Pleasure, Michel, we're all, because that was my first as well, I mean, between Portugal and Spain. And it was, uh, the first one was a flower fair that was happening in, uh, in Spain and everyone was going there to s check the flowers and we were exactly faxing DGT and, uh, and the ministry to, uh, to uh, get some support to the borders. From my part, Jean-Michel, it's, it's been a privilege too and very honored with the invitation. Thank you so much for, for having us on. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.